Hello, and welcome to ShipU Stats. In this video, we're going to go over how to conduct a simple regression in Jazz. A simple regression, which is also known as a single regression, allows a researcher to see the change in one variable that can be predicted by the change in another variable. A simple regression allows us to see the change in one variable that can be predicted by the change in another. For example, if a researcher wanted to know if high school GPA predicted an individual's GPA in college, a simple regression could be used to see how much of the variable of high school GPA predicted the change in college GPA. In order to run a simple regression, there are a few assumptions that need to be met. First, there must be a linear relationship between our two variables. Second, we need to check if there are any outliers in our data set. Here, we can use the residual statistics in JAST to see if the standardized predictive values exceed negative 3 or 3. Third, we need to test for homoscedacity, which is the assumption that the variance of residual errors is the same for any value of x. This can be checked with a scatter plot of residuals. Fourth, we need to make sure that there is independence of our observations. We can test this using a Durbin Watson test which we want to be insignificant. Lastly, we have normally distributed data. We can check this using a QQ plot. Now let's move on to setting up our data set. Before we run our analyses in JASP, we're going to have to make sure that we've entered our data correctly into a spreadsheet so that JASP has all the relevant information. In this particular data set, we have a number of predictor variables, which are measures of motivation, such as grit, and we have a number of outcome variables, which are measures of investment in our goals at different time points, which you'll see right here. Each one of our columns here represents a variable, and each row represents a person. It's very important that all the information for a particular variable ends up in that column, and each person ends up in that particular row. All right, now that we have our data set up in this sheet, let's go ahead and run our analyses in JASP. Now that we're here in JAS, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the regression menu. And from here, we're going to go ahead and click on linear regression. From here, we're going to go ahead and move over our outcome variable, which in this case is going to be goal investment at time three. So this is what the variable we are trying to predict. And I'm going to move that to dependent variable. I want to see if I can predict this variable using our composite grit measure. So I'm going to move that over to covariates, which is where we put our predictor variables. All right, now that we've done this, the first thing we're going to want to do is check some assumptions. In order to check our assumptions, the first thing we're going to do is click on statistics. From here, we'll go to residuals and click on statistics and then the Durbin Watson. In order to look at our assumption for the independence of observations, we'll look at our Durbin Watson statistic and here it is not significant, and so we don't have to worry about this assumption. Next, we're going to look into outliers, and to do that, we're going to go down to residual statistics. Here, we're going to see if our minimum values are exceeding 3 or our maximum values are exceeding 3. In this case, they're between negative 3 and 3, and so we don't have to worry about this assumption either. From here, we're going to go ahead and click on plots to check our other assumptions. First, we'll go to residuals versus dependent. And we see that there is a linear relationship between our two variables. Next, we can go to residuals versus predicted. And here we want to see a sort of elliptical picture here in our data set. It doesn't really look like that here. And so we might actually be violating this assumption of homoscedacity. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and click on our QQ plot. And this will tell us if our data is normally distributed. In this particular situation, we may also be in violation of this assumption as well. However, for demonstration purposes, we're going to go ahead and look at this data as if it actually worked out. Now that we've looked at our assumptions, let's go ahead and go to our actual linear regression output. The first thing we want to look at here is our ANOVA table. Here we have a significant ANOVA, which suggests that there is a significant model here. When we talk about models and regression, we're talking about whether or not our predictor variables predict our outcome variables. In this case, it does look like our outcome variables predict our dependent variables. We also want to look down here at our coefficients. 
Here, this will tell us whether or not our specific variable is a significant predictor or not. Here, we have the same p-value for both our predictor and our overall model because we're only working with a single predictor. When we get to multiple regression and we have multiple predictors, we may have a significant overall model, but we may have individual predictors that are not significant. All right, now that we have our data, let's go ahead and write this up in APA format. In order to write up our results in APA format, the first thing we'll need to do is write a sentence describing the variables that we're using and exactly what analysis we conducted. So in this case, a short sentence, in order to determine if GRIT predicted goal achievement, a simple regression was conducted. We now have that information. From here, we're going to want to describe the results of our coefficient table, where we provide our actual individual weight, the t-value, and our p-value for that particular predictor, in this case, GRIT. We also want to provide information on our overall ANOVA table. Here, we want to go ahead and provide our R value, which we'll find up here in the model summary, our F value with our degrees of freedom in parentheses, and our P value. All right, thanks for watching this short video on how to conduct a simple regression in JASP.